I'm 21 years old and my parents are divorced. My dad cheated on my mom when I was 10 and left up to marry his coworker, Kay. In the weeks following the incident, my pregnant mother ended up miscarrying from all the stress. Kay married my dad and gave birth to my half-sister, S. I remember I always hated going to my dad's place. I remember being miserable whenever I was around them. I never had a bond with S and never considered her to be my sister. Anyways, I visited my dad until I was 15 and then moved to another country with my mom where she met P. P was an amazing guy who made my mother smile again. They ended up getting married and my mom gave birth to my twin brothers. When I moved to a new country, I cut off all contact with my dad. I was supposed to visit them every Christmas, but after my brothers were born, I felt like I finally had a real family and I chose to spend my holidays with my mom, P, and little brothers. Well, last year, S was diagnosed with advanced leukemia. I did feel sorry for her, but I was not in any way affected by the news. She finally passed away on the morning of my 21st birthday. Call me heartless, but for me, it was like some neighborhood kid getting sick. I felt guilty about my feelings because I'm very protective towards my brothers and the mere thought of any harm coming to them makes me anxious. Now for my 21st, I had a big party planned. I went through with the party and had a great time. I was careful about not posting pics on social media, but a friend ended up posting the pics on her Facebook. She tagged me in the pictures and my dad's family ended up coming across them. I was clearly having a great time in the pics with no hint of sadness. Well, Kay saw red. She made a Facebook post bashing me for celebrating my sister's death and being inconsiderate of my devastated father's feelings. She also wished death upon me. I finally had enough and proceeded to make a lengthy Facebook post detailing all the hurtful things they did to hurt me and my mother. I stated that my father was dead to me and that I wanted nothing to do with that family anymore. Lastly, I added that although it was sad that S was dead, I never considered her my sister and wasn't really affected by her death and that they had no right to come at me for living my life and celebrating my birthday. I ended up blocking all of them. Today, my mom told me I was insensitive and that I shouldn't have made the post disowning my dad and dead half-sister. I feel like I did the right thing. I'm happy being 100% no contact and don't feel any guilt for celebrating my birthday or for the post. I was tired of their shit. So, am I the idiot? I have a 9-year-old daughter who I named after my late grandmother, Annabelle, and I'm currently pregnant. If I'm having a girl, I want to name her after my other grandmother, Rose. My sister got pregnant about five months before me and says she wants to name her baby Rose. I said our kids can share the name, but she says I already have Annabelle and could have named her Annabelle Rose, but passed up on the chance. So now I can't have Rose. I told her I'll look for something else, but reserve the right to use Rose if I want to. Then I fell in love with the name Rosalie. It honors my late grandmother, my boyfriend loves it, and it won't piss off my sister. A couple of weeks later, my sister gives birth and announces her daughter's name is Rosalie. I am beyond upset because now she's trying to snatch both names from me. My mom calls me to say she knew my sister was planning to do this and hopes I'm not upset because this means I can take the original name I wanted, which was Rose. But I told my mom I'm sticking with Rosalie. She says it's impractical because both Rosalies will have the same surname. My sister is a single mom and my boyfriend will be taking my last name. My sister then calls me to say I'm an inconsiderate prick and that I'm being petty. She can name her kid whatever she wants and I can't monopolize the name. I said true, so by that same logic, I can use Rosalie. She says having two Rosalies will cause problems, and I say she's the one with the problem so she can change her kid's name or just deal with it. She cursed me out and hung up on me. My mom, dad, and brother are all on her side, and it's just been confirmed I'm having a girl. So am I the asshole? My fiancé and I are getting married this September. The issue lies with the dress code. We have been clear from the beginning that this is going to be a white tie event, so of course there are strict rules attached to that. One thing we are really looking forward to is our wedding shoot. We have spent a large amount of our own money on a photographer who... The photographer is highly, highly sought after in our area and we were lucky to book him last year in advance, so naturally we are taking this seriously. The invitations we sent explicitly told our guests what we would be expecting from them. White tie, no unnaturally dyed hair, no visible tattoos or piercings, and that they were free to decline the invitation if they had a problem with this. We also sent everybody who RSVP'd a reminder over email several weeks ago repeating this instruction. This is going to be fine until one of our mothers has recently posted on Facebook a picture of a cocktail style dress she wants to wear on the day. Of course, this isn't included in our dress code, so we informed her right away that the dress would be unacceptable. Unfortunately, this has caused a lot of unnecessary drama throughout both of our families and even some friends. Both set of parents, cousins, some siblings, and many more people have messaged us privately to ask us to relax on our dress code and allow them to be flexible. We are hosting a private event where we will be able to set the rules. Having been to other weddings over the years, we have fully complied with the wishes of the marrying couple and we do not see why we should not be given the same treatment. Since we made this clear, we've been called assholes by people around us. However, in our opinion, this is our wedding and we've been clear about our preferences all along. We have even told our guests that if anyone has a problem with this, they are free to drop out even though we will still be paying for their seats now and not attend. Am I the asshole for having a dress code at our wedding? They put an edit saying, Just so you know, everyone shouting Bridezilla is being very sexist. I am the man in this relationship, and while my fiancé and I agree on this issue entirely, I am the one who posted this submission. I got married four years ago, and my husband and his family are many times over millionaires. My family is just middle class. Our wedding costs around 700 k paid by him and his parents. 
My parents gave me a flat fee of 10K for a dress, which they are also giving to my sister too. Sister and her fiance are lower class. She has 170K in student loan while he has 110. They have 18K in medical debt and 35K in credit card debt. Well, last night was my sister's birthday dinner and she announced she was engaged and wanted help paying for her wedding. She gave me a spreadsheet of how much she was going to need for her dream wedding. Anyways, her dream wedding is supposed to cost 100K and as her only sister, I need to step up and help pay for her wedding since her parents are only giving her 10K for a dress. She said she needs me to give her at least 7 70k since I'm rich now. When I told her I'm not giving her 70k, she cried and said it wasn't fair how I get whatever I want. When she realized I wasn't going to budge, she broke down about how I'm just using motherhood to be greedy and lazy. I have two year old twins. I eventually told her I wasn't going to be bullied into giving her 70k. She's 15 weeks pregnant, hence why she's in a rush to be married right away. When I tried to leave, she just snapped and said I'm a bad mother since my mother in law stays over often to help. Anyway, she screamed about how I lied about my postpartum depression for the first few months after giving birth and it wasn't real and I only used it to cover up how much of a terrible mother I am. An even worse wife since I wasn't well enough for intercourse for a few months. I told my mom and my mom told her. I feel bad for her since I know she's struggling but I hate her for saying that kind of stuff in front of strangers. My brother who's usually neutral says I should forgive her since she's stressed from crippling debt and has two kids and a third on the way. She's claimed I'm jealous of her since she's younger. She's 25 and I'm 33. And now since I'm over 30 my husband is probably cheating on me with the housekeeper and nanny for all I know since I'm never home. I have helpers twice a week, mostly just to go to the salon with my friends in a weekly date night. Me and my daughter used to be best friends. We did everything together and she truly was the light of my life. But things started to change on her teens. Moodiness, lashing out, lies, etc. I just thought it had to do with her age and that she would grow out of it. I really tried everything. Family therapy, long talks about how much I loved her. None of it worked. She would either roll her eyes back or spit more of her venom. My husband works really long hours and isn't much help to be honest. My husband is white and I am black and my daughter is mixed, but she looks white and she really takes after her father. I really don't know what I did wrong, but her dislike for me began to become pure hatred. She would question all the time how someone like me could be her mother when she was white and I was black. At some point she demanded a DNA test and I said sure if she paid for it and she was not pleased with the results. She is 17 now and began dating this white boy and she is head over heels for him. She refused to let me meet him and told me that having a jobless n-word for a mother truly ashamed her. I am a stay at home mom and I don't think I have ever experienced such pain. Long story short, I couldn't take her abuse anymore and decided to go back to my family in Cuba. My daughter couldn't be bothered to even say goodbye to me. A few days ago, I received a message from my daughter asking for forgiveness. She kept spewing on about how she can't fit in and is in a really dark place and lots of other excuses. It may sound cold, but I don't want to see her face. I don't care about her apologies. I thought I'd made the right decision, but my husband thinks I should really hear her out and forgive her. My family has been harassing me to go back to Miami and make peace with her. My friends have been reaching out and have even called me a shitty mom for not forgiving her and how I must have done something for her to behave like she did. My anxiety is over the roof. I am back on my pills now and I'm starting to think, is it really all my fault? Am I the asshole for leaving my daughter? My friend and I are 22 and we've known each other since childhood and we have always been really tight. We're pretty open with each other and there aren't many secrets in our friendship up until now. I'm not gonna lie, he's the golden child of his family and receives a bunch of support from his parents. His younger sister, who is 21, gets it pretty bad and they treat her like shit. About a month ago, I was on OnlyFans and came across a profile and clicked on it. I shit myself and instantly clicked off the profile. I never would have clicked on her profile if I had known it was her and I wanted to respect her right to be anonymous on the website. I thought about it for a few days and eventually messaged her the following with the intention of helping her out. Hey Belle, this is really awkward for me and I hope you understand that I'm coming from a place of concern rather than anything else. I came across your OnlyFans the other day when at first I didn't know it was you. I clicked off once I realized. Just a heads up, I could identify you from your tattoos and I'd hate for your anonymity to be compromised if you continue to post since you have a fake name and all. I suggest blurring out these features but if you're not bothered by this then keep doing what you're doing. I just thought I'd touch base to be safe. I hope you're doing well and again I hope you understand that I'm just looking out for your safety. See you soon. She replied and was thankful that I pointed that out. She thought her tattoos and other features weren't unique enough to identify her and she told me that she'll make a change. I saw her a couple days later at a party and she gave me a hug and things are back to normal. Fast forward, somebody else had identified her and had been collecting images from before I messaged her and up until now. They sent them to her parents. Nobody knows who this person is and they remained anonymous. Belle's parents ripped her a new one and her brother went on a huge rant on Facebook calling her all kinds of names. He came over for a few drinks and began to unload on me. I didn't really react and just kept telling him to calm down. He asked why I wasn't so surprised and I shrugged and said that a lot of girls have OnlyFans now and it's not a big deal. Eventually, it came out that I knew. I know I should have kept my mouth shut, but he was suspicious that I kept defending a slut. My friends have now booted me out of the group chat and said I broke bro code. So am I the asshole for not telling my best friend that his sister has an OnlyFans? 
Bye, brother. We sleep moved in with us.